Okay, so now from here on, right till we start complete silence. Okay, I am posting something in the chat, which is those instructions. Okay, and I'm now opening the doors and I'm also going on mute. Have fun, don't worry about anything. Enjoy yourself, be true to what you're talking and everything else will be fine.
Good evening, everyone, and a warm, warm welcome. Um, it's a minute after four o'clock, and to be true to your time, as well as everybody on this webinar, I'd like to say a very, very warm welcome, and it's great to have you with us. Just a quick sound check, if you can hear me very quickly, if you could please type yes in your chat boxes. So we understand, all right, okay, so that's good. Well, thank you very much. Okay, so exciting times for us. This is our fifth webinar, and as always, um, our commitment has grown uh, thanks in large part to your support and your um, unfailing feedback, um, very positive and uh, comments that really urge us to put out our best. And so as we go forward, we're going to keep curating additional content for you. Um, speaking of which, on your screen, you can see that we are adding one additional day of webinars. Um, this is going to be every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Indian time. And this will be dedicated to a teacher training series. Uh, we've had a lot of requests for how to train for English. So starting Wednesday, August 5th at 4 p.m., we're doing a series of six webinars every Wednesday, which is dedicated only to training. And while we're starting with English, we will also spread it further to other subjects if you would like it. So as always, your feedback means the world to us. Um, so when this, is, um, this webinar, of course, ends, you, do, you will receive a feedback form. And of course, it's that form that really tells us or points us in the direction we should all be going. Uh, to also help streamline things for you, uh, we've kind of developed a calendar because we understand that you're all exceedingly busy in these days. And this is what the calendar for the upcoming month looks like. Remember, Wednesdays, 4 p.m. is the teacher training series. We are doing it starting with the graded exams in spoken English, which is grade one. Um, at the end of this webinar, again, I will be posting links for you to register. Um, the Friday webinars will continue as always with a focus on the larger issues of skills, of education, pedagogy, and various other things that we look at within the context of education. So that is where we, um, what I'm happy to share with you, it's interesting times in India. We have a new education policy. And if ever there was a time to be doing all that we're doing, it's now, as this new policy also talks a lot about the uh, holistic development of a young learner, the inclusiveness of a lot of other skills, um, change in assessment methods, and so on. So we've got everything to look forward to in education, and we're very happy to continue our commitment towards that end. Today, of course, we have a very interesting topic, drama in education. Um, I have a very dear colleague of mine who is going to be presenting, um, and you will have her in a minute. Uh, another colleague of mine from the academic team uh, and myself will serve as panelists. I'd like to introduce you to Soumya. Um, Soumya prefers, um, and Soumya will be presenting next week's webinar. Um, so Soumya is going to be a panelist with me to help all the questions and answers um, that will keep coming right through. Um, just a quick reminder, you, um, I understand that we've been having a little trouble with the appreciation of participation letters which are going out. I think there's been some errors on our side. I apologize for that. Um, we seem to have got it under control. A few software glitches, which is why one set came out, I believe, without a logo. Um, we've sorted this out. But please, it takes a little time to get it out. So from today's webinar, okay, please give us the following week to get you your certificate in your mailbox. If after that you don't get it, then please, of course, shoot a mail to me, and I'd be happy to look into it. On that note, I want to welcome my colleague, Chanda Katuria. Um, Chanda is uh, taking us through a very, very exciting, very deep, and a very, very interesting topic, which is drama in education. And owing it to its depth, I think you can understand why um, it's imperative that we call this a curtain raiser because there's so much to talk about 
in a topic like this. Um, Chandra? All right, there's Chandra. Okay. Hello, All everyone. Right. Okay, Chandra, so everybody is raring to go, as you can see. Wonderful. Uh, we have over um, 1,200 participants today wow. um, from around the world. Um, and as we all know, um, all our, these are all our colleagues, teachers just like us. So um, without a further ado and making a dramatic pause and an exit, <laughs> I leave it to you to take over from here. All right. Um, this will be, go on for about 45 minutes, everyone, and then we'll circle back and help take questions and answer some of those questions to the best we can. Enjoy this evening. And as always, keep your feedback uh, going for us, not in the chat, but in the feedback forms. Um, any relevant questions, please ask them in the Q&A box. Chanda, all yours. Thank you. Thank you so much, Neil. Really, this overwhelming response that we've received from you, it's wonderful. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for helping us in this journey that we've set out on of reaching out to the teaching community. Now, last week, we had a webinar wherein Mr. Dale Edwards, who you just heard, and Mr. Sachin Das were in conversation with some uh, very experienced teachers of our country. Now, there was one element that stood out in their own lives, and that of their thousands of students was the fact that it is life skills that make us who we are. For those of you who have missed this webinar, I urge you to please log on to our website and watch the recording. In my own personal journey as an actor, director, drama teacher, and a life skill trainer, and my personal journey as to begin with a student and then as a parent, it has proved to me time and again that trauma is very important for our lives. Let me just share with you what we are going to do today. So in today's webinar, we're going to talk about what exactly is drama in education? How different is it from drama? We're going to talk about the constructivistic approach in education, the skills learned through drama, the role of role play, which is really large in therapy and education, the added advantage, advantages of playing drama games, whole class drama or process drama, linking of drama with the other subjects. And finally, last but not the least, Trinity and the drama subjects. So let's begin. The word drama comes from the Greek word to do. So in other words, drama in education is all about doing, doing mathematical formulas, doing chemical equations, doing historical events. In other words, doing education steeped in or interwoven with dramatics. Now, um, it takes a constructivistic approach to another level altogether. But before we move on, let's talk about what is this constructivist approach that we keep talking about. Constructivism is all about the meaning making process of the mind. As you can see in this visual, engage, explore, uh, and ex uh, explain, extend, and evaluate. It revolves around these five E's. Now, in order to get the attention of the student, the child has to first, uh, the teacher has to first engage the students. And she does that by linking what she is going to teach with a prior understanding. Once she's got the interest of the students, that they will start exploring new ideas. Once that is done, they will then start explaining what they have observed. Further students need to solidify or extend uh, their understanding by connecting what they have learned to something real, because that is what education is all about. And in the final stage, students evaluate their new learning based on earlier understanding. 
in a constructivistic classroom, lectures do not look like, well, lectures. Now, I found this very interesting clip uh, from the movie uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, which I'm going to share with you. I really loved it. I hope you enjoy it. And I think it says it all. There you go. In 1930, the Republican-controlled House of Representatives, in an effort to alleviate the effects of the, anyone, anyone, the Great Depression, passed the, anyone, anyone, the tariff bill, the Hawley-Smoot Tariff Act, which anyone raised or lowered, raised tariffs in an effort to collect more revenue for the federal government. Did it work? Anyone? Anyone know the effects? It did not work, and the United States sank deeper into the Great Depression. Today, we have a similar debate over this. Anyone know what this is, class? Anyone? Anyone? Anyone seen this before? The Laffer Curve. Anyone know what this says? It says that at this point on the revenue curve, you will get exactly the same amount of revenue as at this point, this is very controversial. Does anyone know what Vice President Bush called this in 1980? Anyone? Something D-O-O -O economics. Voodoo economics. So in short, in a constructivistic classroom, the teacher is not a sage on the stage, but a guide on the anyone? Anyone? That's right, side. This is where drama and education comes to our rescue, provided we allow it In to become a part of mainstream curriculum. And not only drama, I'd say all the art forms like music, drawing, painting, martial arts, etc., will uh, make learning a more enjoyable, if effortless and effective process. Now, when we were growing up, drama didn't have much place in mainstream curriculum. Sure, we had our uh, theater clubs and our drama clubs where the straggling few would land up if they had missed the bus signing up for the other more important uh, clubs like the literary clubs or uh, the science clubs. But by and large, drama was saved for uh, the morning assembly skits on moral values or maybe for Christmas. Thankfully, things are changing today. Now, um, NCF in its, in its 2005 uh, norms has laid out that learning should be an enjoyable act where children should feel that they are valued and their voices are heard. And what better tool than drama to make learning enjoyable, people valued, and of course their voices heard. NCF further confirms that theater in education is one of the most powerful art forms that can be utilized in education, but unfortunately it is the least utilized. I put my colleague would be presently adding the NCF form uh, the, the, the norms laid down by NCF in 2005. Now going back to the constructivistic approach, let's understand the difference between the three classrooms that we, are, we can we talk about, constructivist, traditional, and drama in education. We call it DIE for short. Now in a traditional classroom, if a teacher was teaching her class of young students a lesson on photosynthesis, let's say, uh, she or he would write, uh, read the definition from the textbook, explain the role of all the plant body parts. Uh, she would also draw a diagram on the board, uh, expect the students to understand and uh, replicate the definition in their exam papers verbatim, Full marks for a neat diagram also. That is a traditional classroom and that is how we've all grown up. Now in a constructivist classroom, a teacher would take the children probably for a nature's walk. 
Let them feel the plant. Encourage them to ask a lot of questions. Maybe also expect them to do some research or experiments of their own. Now, in a drama and education class, this teacher would take it a step further. She would follow up the nature's walk with an enactment. She would weave a story around this entire process of photosynthesis. She would characterize the various body parts, give them character, let them understand what is the emotion or the feeling behind the role that they play. In other words, what she is doing is taking them through the process of being, being the stem, being the roots, being the rain, the rain, the sun, so on and so forth. That for you, my friends, is drama in education. Now, a lot and more has been said about the skills that we learn through drama. Okay, as you see, this is the comparison between the three. Coming to the skills, oral communication, creative problem solving, motivation, working independently, following rules, time management, so on and so forth. There are so many, and these are just the glaringly obvious life skills that one sees in drama. In drama. I'm sure you wonderful teachers out there have tried out uh, some form of drama or the other. So you're not completely unknown to these life skills. I would like to, however, share with you some of my own experiences and how I have come to realize that um, the effect that drama has on students. Now, it was a class in their early teens. Uh, we were doing a role play session on bullying. Two students were bullying a third child. A fourth child who was watching this scene from the outside had to intervene and uh, talk to them and tell them why they shouldn't be doing what they're doing. Now, this child improvised the scene beautifully. He came up with all the reasons why they shouldn't be doing it. It was only later that I was told by the class teacher who was attending the session that this child, in fact, was the biggest bully of the class. Now, the teacher got back about two months later saying that he had changed over a new leaf and he had stopped bullying the other children. This is the impact that drama has. Uh, you will see some uh, very interesting material that there is on how to counter bullying in a classroom through drama. Now, while we are on the topic of role play, I'm sorry I'm deviating from uh, the episodes that I wanted to share with you, but I'll come back to the other one later. Talking about role play, I'd like to add that it has an effect, it has been very effective in reaching learning outcomes. Have your students ever picked up a pencil box and pretended that they are talking on the phone with someone? Or have they ever used the name tags around their necks uh, to, uh, as stethoscopes while they transformed into doctors? And if they have, then they are role playing and they are improvising at the same time. In the words of American author Lloyd Alexander, fantasy is hardly an escape from reality. It is a way of understanding. Please find attached some links in the chat box on the role of role play in education. Therapists, as you can see in this chart here, it's a drama therapy chart. Uh, uh, in drama therapy, they use all these elements that we normally use in theater as well, specifically role play. Coming back to the other incident that I wanted to talk to you about. We were taking class for um, a set of college students and doing some street plays with them. There was this one group of boys who were quite carefree in their attitude and they chose the topic global warming. They did a fantastic job and they were very successful in driving home the point. They in fact even won the first prize. Now in the acceptance speech, the team leader admitted that 
he and his friends had never really paid attention to the to the damage that they were doing to the environment and he also promised that they would be very careful in the future students who perform drama learn how to deal with social economic and political issues now many dramaticians all over the world have uh, spoken about unscripted forms of theater which is also called poor theater poor for the simple reason that it rids itself of all the excesses of theater like makeup costumes stage sound light also script in many cases brazilian director and nobel prize nominee augusto boal was one of the pioneers to find methods on poor theater uh he spoke about not only about everyone having a voice not only the actors but also the spectators and he called them spec actors he wanted to create something educational for a very long time something which taught people to actively deal with oppression in their own lives and start a conversation to paraphrase in his own words he wanted to take the traditional monologue of theater and turn it into a dialogue and thus theater of the oppressed was born which involves techniques like forum theater image theater joker system newspaper theater etc now back home in india we use another technique which is very similar called street theater or nukkad natak as many of you would be knowing it as it is an equally powerful drama technique that allows students to raise social issues prevalent in our society like alcoholism drug abuse domestic violence illiteracy and so on now these are short plays that are performed within the masses using mime song uh, dance uh, to catch the attention of the audience or the masks now i urge you to read up a little on street theater and use it in your classrooms especially on the teens it works wonders and it can be performed well within the school campus for their peers now before we get into how to incorporate drama in the classroom i'd like to talk about something that normally precedes these drama lessons drama games most children and even adults that i have trained recollect the drama games very fondly what they don't realize is that there is a hidden agenda so to say behind each of these games and their objective is mainly to practice certain skills they help the teacher understand what is going through the minds of the participants and they facilitate the children's ability to learn as visual auditory and kinesthetic learners because all children don't learn alike the minute you tell a child that we are playing drama or even an adult their eyes light up instantly and the whole room buzzes with energy i'm sure you all experienced that the best part about these drama games is that they help the participant to shed their inhibitions because everyone in the room is doing the same thing you tell a group of children to act like monkeys and you see the best breeds of monkeys ever and you put the same child on the stage and ask him to be a monkey well the results won't be as effective drama gives apart from the obvious fun element has an underlying profound effect on the learner i'm going to describe a game to you i know that uh, the virtual means have its uh, limitations but i'm going to describe a game to you and i'd like you to type out what you think are the skills being learned uh, my colleagues will probably read it out to me so the game goes like this it's a very widely used drama game it's called crossing the circle let me describe it to you children stand in a circle the teacher numbers them 1 2 3 so on and so forth so that 
more than two or three students share the same number. All right. Now uh, she asks number one, number ones to cross the circle. Now first time round, she's just getting them used to each other and used to the game. So she says number ones cross the circle on the count of five. Five, four, three, two, one. Number twos, five, four, three, two, one. They cross the circle and everyone has exchanged place with the other number ones or the other number twos. Once everyone's comfortable, the game begins. Now, one thing that has to be kept in mind is that even if one child messes up or is slow in finding the place by the time the teacher starts count, finishes the count, the whole team has to sit out, right? Let's begin the game. Number ones, cross the circle like a ballerina. Five, four, three, two, one. We've got all these students walking like ballerinas and crossing the circle. Number twos, cross like lions. They cross like lions. Number fours, cross like a race car. Number ones, cross like monkeys. Maybe she could also throw in a little fun element and make it challenging and say, uh, five, four, three, two, one, everyone cross circle. So you've got all these characters crossing circle at the same time. What do you think are the skills being taught? Of course, they're having fun. Okay, I can't really... Just to let you know, uh, Chanda, yes. the answers that are coming in involve listening skills, okay. learning to act a character, motor skills, mm -hmm. decision making, vocabulary, teamwork, awareness of self and others, concentration, empathy, being alert. Wonderful. Recognizing their place, acting, mindfulness, uh, Wonderful. others, focus, waiting for their turn or turn taking, creativity, activeness, collaboration, oh. organization skills, uh, discipline, uh, tolerance, gross motor skills, okay. etc. etc. Good. I'm so glad I didn't write that on the slide or I need many, many, many slides to cover all those skills. Right. So we, you all agree with me, which shows that drama games and drama does teach many life skills and we cannot restrict it to one 45 or 60 minute session once a week or a fortnight. We cannot put the onus of teaching these invaluable skills that you just spoke about on the shoulders of the drama teacher alone. And not many schools have a drama teacher. We cannot assume that drama can be conducted only in the language class based on what is the stories and the poems in the, in the textbooks. Instead, drama should be an intrinsic part of every subject and every teacher is relative of whether she is a drama trained person or not, should be able to create this magic in her classroom. And the magic wand that will help her to do so is something that we call process drama or whole class drama. This form of drama is experiential. Like you can see on the left side, Fictional problems are posed by the teacher and possible solutions are deduced using life experiences of the students. The biggest benefit of whole class drama is that it allows students to become, to use their own experience and to become experts. They just love doing that. I'm sure you know that. Instead of just reading it out of the textbook and reading what someone else has written from their experience. The image on the right shows you what goes into the planning. Uh, let me just explain what this is all about and then probably I'll give you a small demo. The first is theme or topic. The teacher needs to first decide which area of human experience does she want the pupils to engage and what should be their focus. Then she decides on the context what particular circumstance will be created by the drama to explore the theme? Context, 
which particular circumstance will be created by the drama to explore the theme. Oh, sorry, the context was which particular circumstance will be created by the, by the drama in order to cover the theme and the context. Then comes the roles. Now the teacher has to decide what role is she going to play and what are the various roles that her students are going to play. Then comes the frame, wherein the, the teacher has to understand what is the viewpoint going to be of all these roles because she doesn't want to be caught off guard. Right? Then she has to decide the sign. Sign actually over here just means the stimulus that she is going to use. This could be in the form of a, a picture, a painting, a newspaper article, an artifact, just about anything that, or even a story or a question. Now, and finally, of course, is the strategies. We will talk about the strategies briefly, if we have the time, that is. Now, let's take a fictitious topic. Let's say she wants to do a lesson on Indus Valley Civilization. Let's see how the teacher will plan based on the principles. Let me take you to, okay. Um, so the teacher may want them to focus on, let's say the art and sculpture of the Indus Valley civilization. Now she needs to create a circumstance or a story around the theme. Shall we say, uh, the present day archaeologists, a group of them, have stumbled upon a cave somewhere near Karachi. And some people of uh, some pieces of artifacts have been found. However, the, the cave is now inhabited by tigers. Is it safe and fair to approach uh, the cave to enroach the habitat of the animals? That is a problem because drama cannot happen without a problem. What are the roles? She could now choose to play a high status role like uh, that of, um, you know, the officer, the head of the archaeologist uh, uh, department, or she could also uh, plan to play um, a say subordinate role like that of a media person or an animal right activist who's creating a ruckus about this whole thing. Or she could play a, a low status role like that of a tiger. Of course, tiger is no way a low status uh, person, but that is how it is called in process, dumb, in process drum. Uh, she could choose any of these. Then she comes to the sign. Now, what is sign or symbol like we spoke earlier, the stimulus? It could be in the form of a question, a story, an object, a painting, a newspaper article. It could be a piece of music, some kind of sound, etc. And uh, this is something that I found, which I'd like to share with you maybe a little later. Uh, and then finally, she goes back to deciding on the strategies that she is going to use. Um, what about the viewpoint or the frame? Now, the different characters that are being played in this class would have different viewpoints. The archaeologist, for example, may be of the opinion that we need to go inside the cave and find more artifacts so that we can learn more about the Indus Valley civilization. Um, act animal right activists obviously wouldn't be too happy about it. The villagers around that cave may not be happy with all the attention that they're getting. The media people, on the other hand, would want to make this a story, okay? The stimuli that she would bring to the class. There is this little painting that I found. I know it is uh, nothing close to uh, Indus Valley civilization. It's actually just a worldly art painting that I found at home, okay? She could bring something like this or a newspaper article or any picture. As you can see, the National Geographic magazine has a lot of material on it. Okay, so this is what she would do. And in the final step, she would think of all the techniques that she's going to use. Mantle of expert, bush, hot seating, conscience alley, 
circle of expression, thought tracking, mark the moment, soundscape. So many of these techniques can be used. Now, unfortunately, we do not have too much time to talk about all these techniques. But just to give you the gist of process drama. So process drama or whole class drama, as the word or the name signifies, is nothing but the process of creating story or drama in the classroom. It wouldn't be fair, however, to not talk about the mother of process drama, Dorothy Heathcote. It was first devised and practiced by her. It was developed, of course, so many, by so many other practitioners and dramaticians over the, over the many years. In fact, it keeps changing all the time. In her words, when you enter such a lab, you bring in your knowledge and training with you and take on the mantle of responsibility that goes with the character of the setting. Above all, you know that the result of what you do there matters to someone other than, than yourself. Such settings are cells affecting change in society. Please find some links on Dorothy being attached in the chat box for your reference. Now we are uh, running a little, uh, I think, how are we on time, Dave? We're doing okay. We're at, it's 4.38 and we still have about at least another nine, 10 minutes before we can get into the Q&A session. All right. Okay. So let me just quickly take you through the, the cross-curriculum effect that drama has on all these subjects. Let's talk about mathematics. If your students are interested in, let's say, football or cricket, which most people are in India, you could write a script which involves calculating the distance between uh, the probably the, the uh, I'm sorry, I'm not very good at cricket myself, but maybe the wicket keepers or the fielders, the required run rate, or the required runs, the average score, etc. Now the story could also involve haggling between uh, the IPL team owners for a favorite player. Groups can form shapes and angles with their bodies. And also young children could be given some monopoly money where they had to go and buy a, a seat for themselves as a spectator. Or they could also go and buy a popcorn to munch at. Let's talk about science and drama. In science, what you could do is get students to act out a story on atoms and molecules. How do the molecules move? Maybe enact a dialogue between two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen one to combine and form H2O. You could also enact lives of uh, scientists. History and drama. Recreating scenes from history is the most obvious option. But if you take it a step further, let the children understand why certain incidents took place and why certain people behaved the way they did and how history would have been different if they hadn't. Let's say, for example, the Pearl Harbor attack in 1941. Language and drama, which is very interesting. While learning a new language, one spends about 40% of their time on the vocabulary, the phrases, the idioms, etc. 25% of their time is spent on choosing the right words and the right body language and the expressions. 20% is spent on articulation, pronunciation, intonation, the tone, the pitch, the pace, the pause, and the remaining 15% on the grammar. Drama provides learners with a realistic need for communicating with words, expressions, and body. Language, intonation, and grammar, and the process of language learning can become way more simpler and fun. I hope you all agree with me. Let's move on to probably the last section where we talk about the love affair between Trinity College London and drama. 
Trinity College London uh, and drama go way back. In India, I think it is more than a hundred years old. And we have an array of subjects to offer you. Starting from uh, group exams for age three to seven years is Young Performer's Certificate. Young Performer's Certificate is all about building the confidence of young ones. Followed by the graded examination in uh, listening and in uh, speech and drama. Uh, this also has, uh, well, we'll come to that later. Let's talk about the acting exams. In the acting exams, we have the solo, the paired, and the group exams. This also includes play and production, which the school can take up and register for uh, if they are doing a production on stage. And of course, we've got the performance arts for the multi-talented students who want to throw in uh, other talents that they may have uh, in dancing, singing, magic, etc. Then we've got the musical theater, again for children age uh, six to uh, six onwards, and it has got nine grades. Now, all our exams are regulated by Ofqual, and they all carry UCAS points which will help children when they, are up, uh, when they are applying for their college and their university degrees. Finally, we've got the diploma level exams, which is great for, for older students and also for teachers like you who may have an interest in dramatics and may want to take uh, this skill further. I hope that I have managed to inspire all of you to try out our trauma exams and believe me when you try out drama within the classroom you will enjoy the process as much as your students do with this we come to an end i'd love to take question and answers from you if there are any sure um chandra there's a question that's coming and of course, this I think warrants an entire separate session by itself, which is um, how much is drama helpful in remediation of high functioning autism? Um, okay. So if you'd like to talk about it, but I do definitely feel that a session like this is completely warranted, um, uh, maybe perhaps going forward. Right, you're right, Dale. Uh, autism, I did speak about it briefly. Uh, but there is so much more. There is a branch uh, in, um, in, in, uh, th in therapy, actually, which is also called psychodrama, which is becoming very, very popular. Now, when I did, uh, of course, it's, it's a very intense study, but I did try to read up a little on it. Uh, it uses all these tools that we talk about in drama, including process drama, right? And autism also is, uh, you know, addressed uh, by by all these games and like you said we could probably do a, a session on this um, there's a question over here of, um, it would be great if some examples of drama situations for senior secondary science topics given or discussed okay uh, especially in this virtual situation and that actually brings up another interesting <laughs> fact, I think a good topic for perhaps a webinar to happen yes. uh, where we're going to look at drama as a tool for online teaching. I mean, this came up as a constant uh, thread right through everyone's comments. So we're going to try and develop a webinar on that as well going forward. Uh, yes, um, Dave. Uh, like Dale said initially, this was just a curtain raiser. Just to, uh, you know, I think we were just trying to get your attention and to see how, uh, how each of you would like to take this forward. Uh, there are so many other things. In fact, process drama itself is a very vast topic, uh, which we could probably take on and then take one subject at a time. Yes, Dave, Absolutely. could we do that? So, um, like we said, I mean, the Friday webinars are all about highlighting the larger issues about education, right. skills, life, relevance, and so on. And the Wednesday webinars that we are introducing will be more subject specific. I can see a question over here where someone asks, how do you use drama classes online to teach English? So in fact, that's I think what Chanda made reference to the young performance certificates that we do for very young children. Um, and of course, um, Joyce who presented our first session on the 3rd of July, 
uh, we'll be back on Wednesday to take you through the first grade of uh, teaching uh, spoken communicative English, uh, which does involve an element of role play and drama um, and so on. Um, so I hope that answers that question. Um, and English, if I may add, uh, Dale, English and the languages uh, are uh, the best part, I mean, the, the best way to teach, uh, drama is the best way to teach these languages. There is a very nice question that's come, which is how can drama be beneficial for introverted students? Mm -hmm. What is your okay. experience? Uh, all right, I'd like to say something here. Uh, so uh, remember that example that I gave you about, um, uh, you know, these children playing uh, drama games. Now, it has come across many times that when you group these children, uh, you see to it, the teacher obviously knows what each child is like. So the teacher has to group them in such a way that the shy children are with the, or the introvert children are with the extrovert ones in a group. And then uh, these children learn or pick up a lot from the extrovert children. And uh, it has been noticed many times that these children then stand out and you give them the responsibility of leadership in that group. Fine. Uh, yes. I want to ask uh, Soumya. Soumya, if you'd please unmask yourself and reveal yourself. This question is <laughs> key for you. Um, the question is, how can we use drama as a tool for special needs children? I understand that you have an area of specialization in this. Uh, just for your record, uh, everybody, Soumya is doing the next session uh, the following Friday, which is uh, speech and drama as a teaching tool. And Soumya has a specialization in working with children with special needs. Um, in of and of course, in addition to mainstream drama as well. Soumya, how would you answer this question, please? Uh, thank you, Dale. Thank you, Chanda. Um, I think uh, for today, I would like to say that, uh, um, you know, um, when it comes to special needs children, we, uh, when we are take, taking drama as a tool for alternate therapy, we are not looking at disabilities. We are looking at abilities, and that is how every technique tool uh, that is implied, uh, you know, looks at that special needs. And uh, um, of course, uh, when I'll be taking the next day's seminar, uh, one will know why and how this happens. So uh, to put it in a nutshell, um, there is something, um, there are senses which can be, you know, developed, modified uh, behaviors that can be modified through drama without the child being uh, labeled or uh, put in a one-to-one -one situation. That's how it helps in a broader aspect. On a more general uh, uh, issue of online teaching of drama, uh, there seem to be a lot of questions about that, how to enable, how to do uh, what are your thoughts on that, please, both of you? Well, I think we uh, do have a lot of uh, our uh, team members who are experts at uh, online training. And uh, drama seems like a subject that has its limitations when you go online. Uh, when does one does need to apply themselves and it is not entirely impossible. Right? So I think, uh, Dale, we could do a session on online training yeah. in drama. So um, actually, so that reminds me, I mean, if I, uh, if I can just get you, Chandad, please, to just move to the next slide, um, just to let everybody know what's coming up. Um, we, uh, in fact, this, we developed and devised a calendar of all that's happening uh, in the oncoming uh, sessions. Uh, by the way, this slide, uh, if you can just go back over there, Chandad, for a second, please. Um, for I, There were a lot of questions about how do we take a Trinity assessment or I want to know more about Trinity. Um, uh, the email IDs are up over there. Chandra, if you can just go to the previous slide, please. Um, this will, um, the previous one, yeah. So these are the email IDs for all those. This one, right? Want to reach out geographically um, and you want to ask questions. Uh, those are the email IDs that you can reach. Anything that's academically related um, for me or the team, you can um, mail that to me. Um, someone talks about the diploma exams. Yes, we will do that as well. Um, Chanda, if I can just ask you, please, to go to the next slide. Okay, so this is the next two uh, webinars that are coming up. Uh, the one on Wednesday basically talks about 
um, how to teach communicative English um, for very young children um, pr pr um, between the ages of five to nine approximately. I am right now in the chat box um, putting that link to register. This is on Wednesday at 4 p.m. Um, and in Chandra, the previous slide, please. And I'm also sharing over here on the right hand side is uh, no, uh, the one after. This one? Yep. Um, and the one on the right hand side you see is the uh, webinar that Saumya will be taking, which is Speech and Drama, a teaching tool. I am putting that registration link also right now. So you have two registration links. One is for August 5th and the other one is for August 7th. Um, both of these are uh, one-hour webinars uh, devoted to um, different topics. Uh, just for those who join us a little late, um, the Wednesday webinars are gonna be devoted towards teacher training or what we call the teacher training series. So we're going to dig deep and dig wide uh, into each of the subjects and go through it grade wise so that it will help you as well. Um, some of you may also feel that if you want to do some professional development, you can look at a grade yourself. Um, may I please, Chandav, to go to the next slide? Uh, so this is the entire, oops, okay. So that's the entire schedule coming up uh, for the following month, the teacher training series on Wednesdays. We start the, on the fifth, which is looking at Jesse grade one. Um, then uh, Shoma comes back on the 12th and talks about developing reading skills through the ISC pathway, which is meant for learners of approximately 11 to uh, 14. Um, and Joyce returns again on the 19th to talk about Jesse grade two. And again, of course, on the 2nd of September. Um, the Friday webinars are the headlining ones which talk about larger issues. So next week, um, Soumya will be talking at Speech and Drama, a teaching tool. Uh, the week after that, I will be conducting the 14th webinar, which is online teaching and tools. If you're learning how to make a transition from the physical classroom, uh, this is just, I could call it a curtain raiser because there are many teachers who, in addition, to normally being proficient in the classroom under the circumstances have had to suddenly adapt, evolve, not just survive, but even thrive. So we're going to look at possible scenarios or possible ways to do that in an online teaching um, scenario. Um, and then of course, we're going to be looking at a very interesting topic on the 21st, which is teacher listening time. Why listening skills are important for an English language teacher, and that is being hosted by another colleague of mine, Kiran Shetty, who was uh, one of the panelists last week. Um, so as you can see, we've got quite a lot lined up for you. Um, this will, um, and of course, we still have two more to fill in, one of which I will uh, try and work around online teaching for drama. Um, but please, uh, it's important for you to tell us what you're liking, what you're not liking, um, and any other area that we can uh, improve on. Um, I do know that there were some comments right through about the um, quality of the visual. I think it was appearing a little blurred. Oh. My apologies for that. Um, unfortunately, there was an issue with our screen resolution, but uh, we will be sure to sort this out. Uh, but thank you for letting us know. It's completely unintended. Uh, and hence, I will work doubly hard to make the recording available fast. Um, just a couple of other things that I would like to share with you as well. Um, if you would like uh, the feedback form, you would get for today's webinar when this webinar ends. But if you would like to get a head start and give us your feedback uh, now or click on the link to complete it a little later, that's the link that I've just put into the chat box. Um, we also know that um, we've had very many of you who have done um, Trinity assessments in the past. So if you've ever done an exam, um, we invite you to please join our alumni network um, because we want to actually help 
just like we're doing this with all the teachers, we want to do this with all those who've been, done assessments over the last hundred odd years. So it would be really interesting if we can ever do a, a round table with different learners of different ages of, uh, who are in different positions in life. Um, so that will also help. Um, and of course, so just to, uh, while I wind this down, just posting the last two links, which is registrations for the fifth, that's right now being posted. There you go. And registration for the seventh is what I'm posting just now. Um, just for your information, all of you who've attended this webinar, all links are being shared with you in the mail that you would get uh, within 24 hours after this webinar. So all the resource links that we were putting in periodically will also be there for you to follow through. I saw a comment to talk about uh, one of the links not opening. Uh, unfortunately, it is an NCRT website link. So sometimes it is could be down, but it's a valid link. We've tested it. So it should be available uh, shortly if it is down at the moment. Um, I think on that note, we've come had a lovely evening uh, with three minutes to spare. We're mindful of time always um, because we understand that you give off your precious, precious time as teachers. Um, and we look forward to continuing to do this for you and working closely with you. Um, there were some questions over here that spoke about how can I do a drama exam and so on. Um, we will be talking about the diplomas um, at some point in time because um, I think they're very, very important in formation and also as for your own careers as teachers as well as for your students' benefit. So going forward, a lot to look forward to, a lot of professional development, which is possible on your end. And on that note, I want to say a big thank you to Soumya and Chanda to you too. Thank you. For, thank you, Dale, for this opportunity. For taking and sharing so much of all that you have to share. And my dear teachers, thank you for tuning in week after week. Um, we'll kind of keep this our steady ongoing date, uh, Fridays. And because you are growing on us, we'd like to see you on Wednesdays also. So on that note, I want to say a big thank you for joining us uh, this evening. We look forward to seeing you um, on Wednesday, August 5th at 4 p.m. Please, please, please be sure to register. The links will follow also in the mails tomorrow. And um, so you can continue over there. And like I said, we look forward to seeing you. Thank you very much you. and have a great weekend. Please, of course, stay safe and be safe. All right. Bye now.